with Don Shelby and Pat Miles. Bud Frayling has weather. Ralph John Fritz has sports. And now, this is the 5 p.m. report. In Detroit today, the first memorial services for the victims of Northwest Flight 255. Hundreds turn out to pay their respects to the 158 people who perished in the flaming ruins of the jet that crashed Sunday night. Meanwhile, others extend a hand to the help of the lone survivor. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Don Shelby. Sitting in for Pat Miles this afternoon is Debbie Ely. Doctors say they expect four-year-old Cecilia Sheehan to fully recover from her crash injuries. She took some giant steps today toward recovery as doctors wheeled her into surgery for skin grafts. The crash left Cecilia with severe burns on her arms and hands. Doctors today began taking skin from her back and grafting it onto the burns. Before the surgery, hospital officials reported that she opened her eyes for the first time since the disaster. She was able to give her name when asked, and according to her grandfather, she even demanded to have her doll. Meanwhile, gifts of dolls and stuffed animals and toys of all kinds are pouring in from all over North America, coming in faster than hospital personnel can catalog them. If you are one of those who wants to show your concern with a card or a gift, Cecilia's address is C.S. Mott Children's Hospital, room F8412, University of Michigan Medical Center, Ann Arbor, Michigan, and the address is 48109, or the zip rather is 48109. Carol Kep is a Minnesota woman who has a lot to be thankful for today. She has received an experimental treatment for liver cancer, which is showing remarkable results at the East Coast Hospital. Doctors at Johns Hopkins University have found that by injecting animal antibodies into liver cancer patients, they can reverse the growth of tumors. Our health and science reporter, Tony Vignari, is here to tell us more about that. Sounds encouraging. It is, uh, Donna Debbie. This type of liver cancer treatment itself is unique. But the real story is what happened to the woman before she went to the East Coast for treatment. In short, her life was saved by doctors at Methodist Hospital in the Twin Cities. Carol Kep is a wife and mother in Brandon, Minnesota. Three years ago, doctors found she had a rare form of liver cancer. Mm -hmm. Her liver grew to the size of two footballs. She was given only weeks to live. She was referred to Methodist Hospital in St. Louis Park. Their doctor tried a unique type of chemotherapy. The best results that I could find were uh, where the uh, chemotherapy was literally injected into the liver through a catheter. And so uh, in that manner, the idea of uh, putting the drugs where the problem was made a lot of sense. Carol has beaten the odds, and her tumor has been reduced to the size of a small orange. She still travels to Johns Hopkins University for treatment. Any possibility that this will be extended to uh, patients around here who've now watched this on television and say, maybe that will help me? There are at least uh, seven or eight patients that have uh, had this type of uh, treatment at Johns Hopkins University in uh, Baltimore. There are, of course, other people that this is possible for, but one thing we should point out, this is a very rare form of cancer. It's not very common in North America. It's more common in Southeast Asia. Okay. All right, Tony. Thank you. New evidence tonight about toxic shock syndrome, a disease that hit the headlines about eight years ago when it began striking healthy young women. The disease was linked to the use of tampons, and tonight the American Medical Association has some new evidence. It says new studies show the more absorbent the tampon, the greater the risk of getting toxic shock syndrome. The researchers stressed that despite the findings, TSS remains a very rare disease. Donald Harvey, the former nurse's aide who admits having killed at least 24 patients in one year, finally explained why he did it today. Harvey has already started serving three consecutive life terms in prison. He is thought to have poisoned or suffocated up to 50 people, most of them elderly patients in Cincinnati hospitals. And today, the so-called angel of death revealed why. And it's terrible to lay in day after day and watch these individuals. And I thought I'd put them in other misery. Like, I hope someone will put me out of my misery. Harvey was not sentenced to death because he agreed to plead guilty in exchange for life in prison. The court-martial of St. Paul Marine Sergeant Clayton Lone Tree has reached a critical point. Tomorrow, prosecution and defense lawyers will present their closing arguments, and the judge will give the case to the jury. Lone Tree is charged with trading sex for secrets while he was a guard assigned to the U.S. Embassy in Moscow and Vienna. We get more on the story from Skip Losher in our Washington newsroom. Skip? Debbie, while lawyers for the prosecution and defense prepare their summations today, the jury was also busy. What it did today would never have been allowed in a civilian courtroom. But when neither side objected, the military judge okayed the jury's request. 
So the eight officers who must decide the case spent the day behind closed doors, reviewing all of the documents which may have been introduced into evidence by each side. Defense attorney William Kunstler told us he is encouraged by the jury's interest. He believes it shows the panel may not buy the government's claim that the Marine Guard from St. Paul passed classified documents to a double agent known as Uncle Sasha, to whom Lone Tree was introduced by the Soviet woman, who was his lover and may also have been on the KGB payroll. After the prosecution completed its case, the defense rested without calling any witnesses at all, not even Sergeant Lone Tree himself. His lawyers say they wanted to call as many as eight witnesses, but the military judge ruled that none could offer relevant testimony. Nonsense, says Kunstler. Two of them saw the same event to which a still-secret prosecution witness testified. Kunstler and fellow defense attorney Michael Stuff continue to claim that the military judge wants Lone Tree found guilty. The defense contends that Lone Tree was set up to funnel non-vital information to Uncle Sasha. They claimed the idea was to help Sasha keep his credibility with the KGB while working as a double agent for the United States. Sometime tomorrow, the jury is expected to begin its deliberations to convict Laundry. Six of the eight jurors must find him guilty. Debbie? Skip, thank you very much. Vikings quarterback Tommy Kramer pleaded not guilty to charges of drunken driving today. His lawyer entered the plea. Kramer remains at a treatment center and says he won't drink again. Despite that, his lawyer says Kramer is not admitting he was drunk when Bloomington police stopped him on July 24th. Kramer's driver's license was revoked for a year when he refused to take a breath test. His lawyers say the quarterback is upbeat, looking forward to returning to football next week. He will have missed two preseason games. Ralph John Fritz is standing by now with a report on the Twins game. I'm not sure we want to hear this one either. No more than I want to tell it, Don. It was Detroit 8 and the Twins Zippo today. That makes it 26 to 3. The Twins have been outscored in those three games in Detroit. Carlton, Bly 11, and Necro, the starters. None went five innings. The lead now has dissipated to three and a half games over Oakland. Here are the gory details. Detroit led that game three to zip in the fourth inning, and that is when the knuckleballer, Joe Necro, could have used an emery board. Chet Lemon, a double inside the bag at third, scored a pair of runs, and that up the Detroit lead five to nothing. Jim Morrison and Dave Bergman scoring, and the Tigers scored four runs in the fourth inning. Well, Necro didn't help his cause here. A wild pitch on court. Sal Butera can't hang on. It moved Lemon to third. And then a walk and another base hit. This time it is Pat Sheridan. A single up the middle, and Lemon trots home. And it is six to zip. High fives were king in the Tigers' dugout. And the final score again was Detroit eight and the Twins nothing. Well, maybe they should stay at home and uh, phone in their scores. There's uh, Tom Kelly. Uh, talking with his pitcher, uh, to, uh, Joe Necro, and Necro, as we said, lasted three and a third innings. Eight to nothing was the final score, and I suppose now with the Oakland and Toronto uh, tied in the uh, seventh inning this afternoon, that score is five all. The magic number will hold steady at 37. Okay. That guarantees him a tie. Is <laughs> all right, Ralph, thank you very much. Still to come this afternoon, a Maple Grove family is alive, thanks to some heroes who rescued them from their burning home. Also, some of Minnesota's most famous citizens come home for good. Joan and Fritz Mondale arrived back in the Twin Cities today. And we'll hear from TV reporter David Horowitz about his on-camera scare with an armed man. This, uh, this, this copy, which is just handed to me. You want to tell me your name or not? I had a real problem with tartar on my teeth. The hygienist would have to work super hard to clean my teeth. It was like I had a concrete on the bottom and she had to chip away at it. And she recommended that I start using the Crest Tartar Control. After a year or two of using the Tartar Control Crest, going back for my checkups was so pain-free and uh, painless. It's effective. When they say it's Tartar Control toothpaste, that's what they mean, it's Tartar Control toothpaste. Yes, I have proof that it works. you got to look at my teeth. It's Highland Summer Cuckoo Sale. Friday and Saturday only for 22 hours. Highland goes crazy with savings on brand names in every Highland store. Like this 19-inch color TV with automatic color control, just $148. So come to Highland and go absolutely nuts Friday and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. at Highland Summer Cuckoo Sale. But when time runs out, you're out of luck. Two great names. One great sale. Levi's, America's favorite jeans. And Burlington Coat Factory, America's best place to save. Offer fabulous prices on 100% cotton stonewashed Levi's for back to school. Levi's stonewashed jeans, specially cut for her, only 
$19.90. Men's stonewashed jeans, $19.90. Oversized fashion stonewashed jackets, $35.90. Classic stonewashed denim jackets, $29.90. Stonewashed denim skirts, $18.90. Levi's rugby shirts, $21.90. Levi's and Burlington Co. Factory. Two great names. One great sale. Warps coverall storage bags come in a variety of sizes, and in August, they're just $1.99 a pack. Look for the banner at participating True Value hardware store. A real-life drama was played out on a Los Angeles television news set last night. A man appeared in the back of the KNBC newscasters while they were on the air. The man pointed a gun at consumer reporter David Horowitz and demanded he read a statement about the CIA and space creatures. After station management blacked out the broadcast, the man, 34-year-old Gary Stolman, sat down his gun. It turned out to be a toy. Horowitz was most relieved. You know, you're sitting there in a situation where the guy might have a real gun and kill you. This is the end of your life. And I'm thinking to myself, the end of my life in the Channel 4 News studio, you know? And there's something very unglamorous about that. Indeed. Station security guards took Stolman into custody. He has a history of mental illness. An Alexandria woman, temporarily blinded by the setting sun, hit and killed a nine-year-old girl yesterday. Ivy Sundegard died today of injuries from that accident. Two other girls walking with Sundegard also suffered injuries. No charges have been filed against the car's 85-year-old driver. A 37-year-old Coon Rapids woman was uh, killed in an early morning accident. Doris Dumont rode in a van that collided with a pickup truck in Coon Rapids. Police say the pickup truck driver had run a red light. The impact of the accident caused the van to careen down an embankment. The van and pickup truck drivers suffered injuries, but their names and conditions have not been released. Two passing motorists became Good Samaritans early today. Dana Peters and Bob Hansen spotted a house on fire at 9060 Westland Lake on Maple Grove and rousted the home's owner, Larry Anderson. All of a sudden I heard somebody yelling, is anybody in there? Is anybody in there? And they said, your house is on fire. And so I grabbed a pair of pants and ran and grabbed the kids and, and jumped out. Anderson, his wife, and three sons suffered only minor injuries, as did the family cat Morris. Firefighters pulled the dazed cat from the burning house. Senate Majority Leader Bob Dole is testing Minnesota waters today. The Republican from Kansas is yet to announce his bid for the presidential nomination, but today he arrived in St. Paul with plans of setting up a state campaign. He announced a team of well-known Minnesota Republicans, including Congressman Arlen Stanglin and former gubernatorial candidate Cal Ludeman, to head up the Minnesota campaign. Dole says his campaign seems to be going pretty well. One of Minnesota's leading Democratic families, the Mondales, back home. The former vice president and his wife packed up their belongings and today made the trip from Washington, D.C. Ava Thompson met them at the airport and joins us now. Don and Debbie, Walter Mondale says he has friends all over the world, but that most are here in Minnesota, and this is where he wants to be. Mondale and his wife, Joan, arrived this morning to a simple homecoming. Family and a few friends greeted them. Mondale's first comments after setting foot in the Twin Cities were about the nice weather and all the hunting and fishing he's looking forward to. He'll begin work with Dorsey and Whitney Law Firm next month. I'm going to do some teaching at the university and I hope some other civic efforts. And I'm going to be with a lot of old friends and a lot of my roots, so everything's perfect. The Mondales bought this home in Ken the Kenwood neighborhood, and as you can see, it's not quite ready yet. The entire front of the house is being redone. Mondale's neighbors say it'll be nice to have such a high-profile person living in the area, but they don't expect his presence to change much, except maybe a few more curiosity seekers wandering into the neighborhood. You know, nice to know that uh, a former vice president can just kind of, uh, in latter years, move into what is basically a pretty residential, you know, older neighborhood in Minneapolis. So, uh, I think it's nice to see. I think it says a lot for him. Now, there is speculation that Mondale may run against Senator Rudy Boschwitz in 1990, but Mondale says no. He even says he'll probably never run for political office again and has no plans to run any sort of campaign. Don he Andy? said uh, probably will never <laughs> probably. run. Probably. That's for... the key word. The key word there is probably. All right. And he even said it himself that many times people hear him say that. And they say, you say probably, you must be planning something. But again, he says no. I think we'll just have to wait and see. We'll wait and see. <laughs> All right, David. Thank you. Still to come, Bud Kraling joins us with his forecast. And we'll take you live to St. Paul for a bird's eye view of the newly reopened Snelling Avenue. Yeah.
first back to school sale with great values for you and your home. These room size rugs in five decorated colors at $35.99. Matching runners, $3.99. Assorted plastic housewares for bedrooms, bath, kitchen, or only a dollar each. Coupons are a great way to save, and these are worth 50 cents toward all CoverGirl cosmetics. So stock up on eyeshadow, lipstick, nail polish, lots more. Come on in and see what Woolworth has in store for you. Hello, I'm Frank Blair. And hello again. You've probably seen me on TV talking about the advantages of the Guardian Plan, the insurance-funded pre-arranged funeral program. I believe in pre-arrangement. It's practical and loving. That's why I have the Guardian Plan program myself. I planned everything in the comfort of my own living room. I determined how much to spend and on what. And that amount is guaranteed never to increase even if inflation reaches double digits again. I've made the Guardian Plan program part of my personal and financial planning. Shouldn't you make it part of yours? If you'd like to learn more about funeral prearrangement, call 1-800-9-CARING for your free copy of this informative booklet. And tell them Frank Blair told you to call. The Guardian Plan program is sponsored by these fine funeral homes in your area. And we've been breezing along with the breeze here for about, well, about 15 minutes. I have <laughs> Just another nice day. However, the humidity is up a bit. The dew point is up to 61, and the temperature in the low 80s today. And I think I'd have to say it was a kind of hot day to the west of us. It's hard weather, weather to dress for first thing in the morning. You wear something warm, well, and it gets what am I gonna, even warmer during the day. I was going to wind up in the afternoon. Well, it was 95 at Denver today and 100 at Pueblo, so the central high plains kind of feeling some of that heat and humidity. I'll show you why. There's a low-pressure center in Nebraska that has been a stubborn one. It's been there for several days. This warm front that extends to the southwest will move to the north tonight into southern Minnesota. A very strong cold front to the west of us, and between those two, we've got a good chance of showers and thunderstorms after sunset tonight. It was windy at Cutbank, Montana. Over 40 mile an hour winds and temperatures 76 this afternoon, but it was only 55 at Arquita, California. But 90 at Cheyenne, 104 at Hill City, and there's the hot pocket there. Savannah, Georgia with a quarter inch of rain, 81. Partly cloudy at Portland, Maine, and also 81 degrees. And there are some showers from Mobridge, South Dakota into southwestern Minnesota. A thunderstorm at Des Moines. Rain in the southwest today, Yuma, with a half inch of rain. That's about a fifth of their annual rainfall total. And showers dotting the Gulf here and up through Georgia and to the Carolinas. Charleston, South Carolina, with a half inch of rain today. And the rain outlook for tomorrow, some rain again through the southwest. Yuma could get some more rain. And through central Florida and eastern Minnesota, including the Twin Cities, Iowa, northern Missouri, through the Great Lakes states of the western part of New York and Pennsylvania, we're forecasting at least a quarter to a half inch through the day tomorrow into tomorrow night. And in our own area, we've got some rain from north and west of Redwood Falls through Redwood Falls down to Mason City, Iowa. It's kind of sliding down the south of the Minnesota River to the southeast at 22 miles an hour. Here in the Twin Cities, we are partly cloudy at the moment, and the scene is Minnehaha Creek, a lovely view. Temperature at 81 degrees, humidity 53%, the wind from the south at 12, the dew point at 62, and the pressure holding steady at 30 inches. Partly sunny, temperature at 81. Forecast for tonight, 30% chance of rain after sunset tonight, 65 for the low southeast winds. Forecast for tomorrow, a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms will be 84. And then the forecast for Saturday is partly sunny, less humid, 76 degrees. Pollen count for the day. Yesterday, 163 grains, and today, 150 grains, and most of that is ragweed. So it's down just a little bit today. I'm feeling yesterday. it, though. <laughs> I'm suffering. A few grains doesn't make very much difference. It does. <laughs> you know. yeah. Well, as summer starts to wind down, we get ready for the State Fair. And a week from today, we will be broadcasting this newscast from our booth at the State Fair. And just in time for the State Fair, the Minnesota Highway Department has reopened Snelling Avenue, which runs north-south past the fairground gate. To mark that occasion, the folks along Snelling Avenue have thrown a party. Our Dale Dobish has the best view of all of that party from our helicopter. Dale? All right, Debbie. Good afternoon to you and everyone. Right now, we are over uh, Snelling Avenue looking south towards the fairgrounds. We're actually a little north of Larpenter. At the party, the uh, ceremony is, I guess, opening up the... Uh, dedicating this new section of Snelling Avenue are in progress right now and should be winding up pretty quick. 
But you can see Snelling Avenue is re uh, reopened, Debbie. This complete rebuilding of Snelling Avenue involved removing four feet of clay, replacing the storm sewers, replacing the electrical lines, adding two more signal lights, and then widening the roadway from 22 to 24 feet, and then pouring an eight-inch concrete road. Residents in the area are to be commended for putting up with the inconvenience for the five months it took to rebuild the Snelling Avenue. Incidentally, uh, the contractor, progressive contractors, finished the $8.6 million project six days early and received a bonus of $10,000 per day for their early finish. So uh, all of us will get a chance next week when the fair opens one week from today to enjoy the new Snelling Avenue. Debbie? And we should put a plug in, too. You'll be out at the State Fair with a helicopter. You bet. Days. We'll be back again this year. Okay. Thank you, Dale. Sounds like a lot of work, but uh, not as much as perhaps some musky anglers go through every year to catch a big one. RJ is standing by in the Sports Center to talk about that. Oh, they are tough, Don. And in just a moment, we'll take a look at the lures of the late season lunkers. Ted Capper will be joining us to talk about musky madness and a look at the big one that did not get away. Stay with us. What's so different about Arby's new chicken club sandwich? The slice of Swiss? The crispy bacon? The fresh lettuce? How about the juicy tomatoes? The creamy mayo? Uh-uh. What makes it different is the chicken. Roast chicken, not fried. Something no other fast food place has. So come into Arby's for the only roast chicken club sandwich around and taste the Arby's difference. And we looked for a car for over a year, and we had no problem with Polar Chevrolet. They were very pleasant to work with. It's not like some of the dealers we've dealt with that there's high pressure or anything like that. It's been really nice. Over 4,000 families bought right here at Thane Hawkins Polar Chevrolet and Mazda last year. Our salesman was really great. He knew a lot about the car, and he was real helpful. And Low prices, huge inventory, low money down at Thane Hawkins Polar Chevrolet and Mazda, Highway 61 in White Bear Lake, where financing is as easy as the stop of approval. I must own a half dozen pair of boots, but these are the ones I use. You can tell by looking at them. Just like even though I've got other yellow pages around the house, this is the one at the top of the pile, U.S. West Direct. It stays on top because I can find everything I need right here. U.S. West Direct is the one I use. <laughs> you can tell by looking at it. U.S. West Direct, the one that gets used. There's a new lilt that makes silky body easier. A new lilt that makes soft waves easier. A new lilt that makes the difference easier. It's new lilt with built-in conditioners. Now perming and conditioning with no extra steps. For long-lasting, easy care hair. Go ahead. New lilt with conditioners makes the difference even easier. One of the most elusive of all sports fish, the muskie, and uh, Ralph and Ted are going to tell us how to go get them an easy. Oh, well, fisherman, Ted Capper is with us, muskie time, and you say that it, uh, it does take a lot of patience. Is it an impossible fish to catch, Ted? It not, it, it's not an impossible fish. It's just the time of, of year that you go to fish them. Right now is an ideal time to go out and take a trophy fish. Well, I know I don't have the patience. Uh, Al Linder and his gang from the uh, the Inn Fishermen were up around Lake of the Woods uh, just a short time ago, and we're going to show you a videotape here. His uh, nephew, Jimmy, actually ended up landing this one. And look, there's some of the scenery they saw up there. Uh, look like moose. Well, I think there are three deer swimming in the uh, lake. But, now, they cast, and then they do a lot of uh, what appears to be jigging with it. But uh, they finally landed this one right here. Jimmy is uh, throwing a, a, a bucktail. It's about a 7, 8-inch uh, lure. It's all hair with a spinner bait. That one there is probably a 25, 30-pound fish right there. He caught it on a bucktail. They caught quite a few fish on that trip. I don't think you want to be monkeying around with it the way they were doing there, but they finally do land this thing. One of the biggest problems of, of catching one of these fish, if you're going to release it, is getting the hooks out of them. It's, it's, it's a real project. Not a good eating fish, really, is it? So they should be released. I think that they're more of a trophy. I don't think that they're the best eating. Uh, a lot of guys catch them and release them or put them on the wall. You know, you and I were fishing with Al Lindner earlier this year, and he was telling us that they were hitting up Lake of the Woods. You and I could have gone on this trip, but we had other commitments. Just think that could have been on the end of your line or my 
my line. That's a 30-plus musky right there. Oh, it's beautiful. Does that make you sick? Look at that fish, huh? Well, Jimmy's caught a lot of them, and they've got some 35, 40-pounders uh, mounted, so I think he's going to release this thing, but he that's does, beautiful. He does release it. That is a beautiful fish. Are there any, are there any lakes in the Twin City area where you can catch muskies? Well, there's quite a few. Actually, there's Independence, there's Rebecca, there's Bald Eagle, but now we're talking about fish probably maximum weight, 20 pounds. Um, you want bigger fish, you've got to go northern Minnesota, uh, Leech, over Lake, to Wisconsin, Winnie. into yeah. uh, uh, Hayward area. But Leech, Winnie, Cass Lake, 30-pound fish are not common, but they're, they can be caught fairly regular. This may look like a Christmas tree. It is, that's what, an, an average musky this tackle is, box? This is uh, every musky fisherman that goes out. This is a typical type musky box. Uh, Show us a lure or two. What, what this one like. here is uh, what they call a suic. That's about a 10-inch lure, and hmm. uh, they, what they do is you get a stiff rod and you jerk it 8 to 10 inches and you make it kind of erratically swim through the water. It's very effective for muskies, but also northerns as well. You don't want to go swimming in musky waters, do you? Oh, they don't bother you. <laughs> you got a uh, bucktail there? This one here is, is, is one that Jimmy caught. This is a harasser. It's a double, there's, there's three sets of hooks in here. There's a lot of hair, kind of colorful, but does catch a lot of fish. Let's take a look at Ted Capra's fishing hotline number, if we can. And while we do that, and there it is, 785-2402 for any information they want in fishing, right? Just call, give you a call there. That's right. What's, We've the, got a, what's the key to taking a trophy? Well, I think fishing big water. I mean, fishing where there's big fish, I would go to, right now I'd be fishing, um, I'd fish actually Cass Lake, and I figure I could catch a 30-pound fish in a day or two. Okay, so now we're anxious to go uh, musky fishing from now until freeze-up. So, uh, Don and Deb, I know that you're both drooling to uh, get out there and do a little fishing. That's right. Ted knows what he's talking about. He guided for years up there on that big water and caught a blue million over 30. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to be back uh, with the Thursday Five in just a moment. This is the Highland Helpline. The number to call if you ever have a question or a problem with anything concerning Highland. Who knows? Someday, somebody might even have to use it. Right now, this Litton microwave oven with variable power levels and touch controls is just $137. And if you've got a problem the store can't solve, just call the Highland Helpline. Highland. Nobody gives you more, and nobody but nobody sells for less. At Plow, Minnesota, we've plain got too much inventory. You bet your jar at Plow, Minnesota, we've got too much carpet and vinyl flooring. So we're clearing out summer inventories before August 31st. Terrific savings, like up to 50% off on carpet remnants. Save up to 50% when you buy from Plow, Minnesota's huge stock of plush quality carpet. Even no wax vinyl floors are in stock and on sale from $2.99. Plow, Minnesota is clearing out summer inventory before August 31st. Visit our new store in Burnsville, County Road 42 and Burnhaven Drive. Follow the rainbow for a golden deal. Right now, follow the rainbow to Toyota Trucks. Your Toyota dealer has special deals on America's best-selling compact pickup. 20 models under $10,000. Low, low prices, yet still number one in standard payload. Limited edition four buys, already a low price, then add $650 in options free. It's time now for a golden deal. Just follow the rainbow to Toyota's golden deal days at the rainbow's end. On now at your Toyota dealer. You might not take your eye care quite as seriously as we do at Pearl. Cover your eye. But you should. No, no, just one eye. In fact, a thorough eye exam is so important, Pearl will now pay for it when you buy a pair of glasses. Okay, Re read the bottom line, please. E. E. There is no E. Look for the Pearl coupon and complete details in TV Guide or your local paper. I think she needs glasses, Mom. Coming up in just a few moments will be the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. And certainly uh, on the agenda for the national news will be a story that we just learned of just a few moments ago. Uh, back about three months ago, you may have remembered that we bandied about the name William Dixon quite a bit. He was Gary Hart's campaign manager. He lives in Madison, Wisconsin. Apparently, a reporter for United Press International has spoken with Mr. Dixon, who says that it is very likely, now this is Mr. Dixon's words, very likely that Gary Hart will re-enter the presidential uh, nomination process within 30 to 60 days. Dixon says he will do that only if Mr. Hart apologizes for his indiscretions with the model 
uh, and that he has to come to grips with what Mr. Dixon calls imprudent behavior. But he says the front runner at the time that he dropped out of the race will likely re-enter the presidential uh, nominating process for the Democratic Party within 30 to 60 days. That comes from Madison, Wisconsin. Well, Dan Rather has his lead. Our lead tonight at 6 will be Alan Cox reporting the latest on the investigation into the crash of Northwest Flight. You can get another one.